Welcome back to the garage. Or if you're new to the channel and this is the first video of mine that you've seen, welcome to the garage. My name is Zane. In today's video, it's time to get back to work on my 1968 International Travelette. I need to cut the exhaust up that I took off of the wrecker and adapt it to where it will work on my Travelette. So this video may be a little bit different than the ones I put out in the past. There'll be a lot of measuring, cutting, and welding, so hopefully you can still sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. Hi, how are you? Okay, so I, I probably have you at a bad camera angle. I do apologize for that. I can't really shed a lot of light underneath this truck. But I got the driver's side chunk of exhaust and I'm going to try to fit it up before I get too carried away with this whole process. So I've got it here and I can see the manifold. And I'm really glad that I did because it looks like this muffler is right in the way of this bracket for the emergency brake cable. So I don't know if I'm just going to lengthen the tube that comes off of the exhaust manifold or try to actually move this muffler a little further down. Now it's the part of the video for all the excuses. You might have seen I took the exhaust and tack welded it together in my garage. I took it down there, test fitted on the truck, everything seemed fine, so I brought it up here, put some sawhorses outside, and welded it. And I could tell you what happened, but I'll just go ahead and show you. So stay with me here for a moment and just hear me out. I welded this outside, it blew all the shielding gas away, I didn't really do a good job of fitting it up. I really don't know what I'm doing. 
is what I would say if I was being serious. I had to play a little joke on you there. This was two pieces of scrap tubing that I had laying around. <laughs> this is the exhaust. I've got it all welded up, which you'll see in a moment. The welds, are they professional? Well, not really, but I think they look good for a guy that drives a dump truck every day for work. I've got to go ahead and get this old muffler and tailpipe section out of here. It's held onto the frame by these two braces that come off the side of it. There's 9 16th hardware that holds it on here. I'm probably going to go ahead also and move the emergency brake cable bracket. I'll probably need to put a spacer in there. I'm not sure if the emergency brake even works and I'm scared to test it because I'm in the process of trying to get it running. I still might have to move it around and I don't want to stomp down on the cable to see if it works just for it to get stuck and have to pull one of these wheels off on the back. So I've got my impact that I recently bought to try to make things go a little bit faster. I've got a wrench. We'll take this muffler off and probably mess around with that bracket. 
and hopefully I don't block the camera. The smaller impact driver didn't work, so I got its big brother. I bought this one a while back as well. I'm not affiliated or sponsored by Lowe's in any way, shape, or form. This is a Cobalt. Basically, the only reason I bought it is because it's black and blue like my channel colors. So let's see if this takes these bolts out of here. Seems like it's working really well so far. Those weren't as bad as I thought they'd be. And of course, something that stubborn, I might have to break out the BFH or the big fancy hammer again. I can tuck this bracket up out of the way and then when I get the exhaust on here, I can just come in here and build a spacer to keep it away so it doesn't rattle on anything. But now I think it is time to get the exhaust, donut gasket, couple bolts, and I'll get this side mocked up so I can cut the passenger side tubing up and try to get it to Y into this one. Mocking up that exhaust outside underneath my travelette would have been a pain if it wasn't for the simple fact that I got lucky and I already have an identical 345 sitting on an engine stand here in my garage. Due to the fact that the donut gasket thickness dictates how long the bolts need to be. The bolts for the flange come up from the bottom, and if they're too short, they won't go through the exhaust manifold and hold the exhaust to the manifold. If they're too long, they'll actually strike the bottom of the cylinder head, and I won't be able to use them. So instead of having to lay out there and just guess on bolt sizes, I can mock up a chunk of the exhaust right here, and I'll show you how I'm going to accomplish that. I've got my magnetic light stuck to the oil pan on the side of this engine, so I hope you can see what I'm talking about. But the way this flange is facing, there's a bolt that comes up from the bottom on the outside and one that comes up from the bottom on the inside. You can actually see when I cut the exhaust off the wrecker, I didn't cut this bolt short enough and it actually hits the bottom of the cylinder head and won't come out of here. So I need to cut a little bit more off of it when I work on this engine. But I've got the donut gasket. I can put it right there. I'll grab the exhaust, try to hold it up as best as I can with one hand here. I have to reposition myself and hold it up with my knee. Got the tape measure already set. So it looks like a two and a half inch bolt will work just fine without hitting the bottom of the cylinder head. Like I mentioned, if they were too short, it wouldn't hold this together. And if it was too long, it would do exactly like this one is in striking the bottom of the cylinder head. So now I can get the bolts and get this exhaust mocked up on the driver's side. Here's an unfortunate snag. I've got the exhaust mocked up on the driver's side of the truck. You can see that the gasket that I was talking about is about an inch from the manifold. That's because this cross member is hitting in the straight section here. So I'm probably going to have to cut and lengthen that straight piece with the flange on it that goes up to the manifold. Or maybe cut it here in the center somewhere and bring this down a little bit to get it away from this cross member.
It took about 20 to 25 minutes to lengthen this downpipe and take care of this unexpected problem that showed up. But this comes down far enough now that the cross member should be far enough away that we won't have to worry about it. The flange will still actually go over the welds. There's plenty enough room. Now I don't have a million subscribers, but I probably have at least one person out there watching right now that maybe even works in an exhaust shop and you're probably screaming at your television telling me all the things that I'm doing wrong right now. I just kind of hope this is inspirational in a way because I'm trying to use what I have instead of just going and buying $200 worth of exhaust tubing to put on an engine that's not staying in that truck permanently. But anyhow, this is all taken care of. I'm going to take it down to the truck and hopefully put it on before it gets dark outside. I'm losing daylight pretty fast, but I wanted to show I got the bolts in holding the flange to the exhaust manifold. You can see the extension that I made. And now I have plenty of room on this cross member. And I've actually got the exhaust running parallel to the frame. It's up right about even with the frame too. It's not hanging down, so there shouldn't be any more problems. So that does it for the easy side. Tomorrow I've got to come out here and get the passenger side manifold to drop down, cross over underneath this oil pan, and Y into this driver's side pipe. So the video is not over just yet. I wanted to take a moment to explain myself. I stayed up pretty late last night editing the first part of this video that you just seen, only to realize that I'm almost 17 minutes in and I've only showed you footage of the easy side of the exhaust and no footage of this complicated part that I'm about ready to tackle. Now it's nice and sunny at the moment after work this Tuesday afternoon. It's supposed to storm the rest of the week, and I really want to try to get this video out to you all by the weekend. So what I need to do is pretty much take this piece and make it a mirror image of itself. If you've been following along, you're following the story of me taking the exhaust off of my wrecker and trying to adapt it to where it will work on my travelette. Meaning, the passenger side exhaust that was on my wrecker needs to be adapted to go down the driver's side of my travelette. So I need to get to work cutting this one up, getting all the fittings to face the opposite way, and then to get this pipe to Y into the other one that's under the truck right now, I'm probably going to take this turn down and use the 45 section out of it for that. So let me set the camera up, I'll get to cutting and welding, and then I might show you the finished product when we get to the truck. But let me show you what I came up with. You can see where I actually took the exhaust and bent it a little higher so it would clear the front differential that sits over here. I've got a couple inches between it. All of these bends come down and around. I've got a slip coupling right here. And then I took a 45 and wide it into the driver's side. That's pretty much the finished product. I just realized it would be stupid of me to not show you what it looks like on the truck. Please forgive the horrible camera angles. You can see the passenger side comes down. Let me get on the other side of the front end. You can see how it snakes down, comes underneath the oil pan. It has a clamp on here because there's a slip fitting and it goes into the Y for the driver's side that just comes straight off of the manifold. Now on the original exhaust, it actually slipped together somewhere in this area, but with the fittings they sell at the auto parts store, it was pretty much impossible for me to do that. So I've got one here in the center that works. Then I've got the exhaust running parallel to the frame. It's hard to see, but there is an exhaust hanger back there. Already having this identical 345 engine in the garage helped me out tremendously with this whole process. Due to the fact I could cut the pipes, tack weld them together, and mock them up on the travelette, then take the whole system apart, bring it in here, and mock it up off of these manifolds, and fully weld it all together in the comfort of my garage, rather than laying on my back underneath that truck in the driveway, which would not have been fun. I've got a few pieces of exhaust left over. There's also some couplings and reducers that are brand new I could probably take back to the parts store. But let's be honest, they weren't very much money, and it's always nice to have that stuff on hand in case I need to patch exhaust on something else. Now you might have seen me earlier in the video use masking tape to mark this exhaust. I think that works a lot better than just following a marker line that would be scribbled on this piece of pipe. 
because you know if you match up one edge to the other edge and keep this tape flat, you'll have a nice straight cut. That's just a little tip that I learned a while back. I figured I'd pass that on. And there you have it. The exhaust for the Travelette is finished. That means there's one less thing to have to worry about. Now, other than checking the fluids and the differentials, the transmission and the transfer case, and building that spacer for the emergency brake cable bracket that I moved for the exhaust, that pretty much wraps up all of the work that requires me to lay on a chunk of cardboard underneath that truck in my driveway. So I'm very fortunate for that. The rest of the work should be topside to this truck. I rarely ever run into a rude comment here on YouTube, and I'm very fortunate for that. I just wanted to understand the fact somebody's probably watching this, wondering why I'm spending so much time and putting exhaust on an old beat-up four-wheel drive truck. Now, I don't like giving things away on future videos, but let's just say that I've got something in mind. I want to be able to sit in that truck and talk to my passengers instead of wearing earphones and listening to the engine scream from just running on open manifolds. I was always told it's not a good idea to run open manifolds either because you can crack a valve. Don't know if that's true or not. But anyways, I've only got about $60 wrapped up in this exhaust from the parts I bought. And it only took about three days of coming out here after work to get this done. I think it's well worth it. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or a question down below in the comment section. If you enjoy this type of video, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. And as always, just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. Now that this video is over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.